guys here? Ready to learn something? All right. Very cool. All right. I'd like to first start by thanking all of you folks who showed up here at the Red Law Sport Fishing and Boat Show. This year we have a I, I tell you what, I'm so happy when Mike Love sent me the seminar schedule with the speakers. About two months ago, I was really jacked up and I couldn't wait for this one here. This is a great friend of mine. He's a fantastic fisherman. I have learned so much. He's helped my fishing. And I've been fishing ever since I was this big. And one afternoon with Bill Simmontel in the boat changed my whole fishing perspective and everything. So those of you that have read, he's got the book out, Big Bass Zone. He's the, he is the BBC. And his videos, get on his YouTube channel. You've got to check out all the stuff that Bill Simmontel does because he will... He will take you to a different place. Some of the things that you do when you're fishing, you might not realize why you're doing them. And after you listen to Bill, Bill's speakings and Bill's teachings and read Bill's books, it will open your mind and make you understand what's going on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start this thing with a quick little story. This guy's, this guy's got a, an ego the size of Texas, but that's okay. It's okay. Bill and I, we've known each other for about 13, 14 years. One of, the, one of the first chances I ever got to meet him. We got to go fishing, we had a great time, and I'll get into what that day. But we were pre-fishing for a tournament. We're gonna have this tournament on Saturday. It was a pro-am. First place is a bass boat. Well, the first day of the tournament, we get down there, we're all ready to go, and there's about 100 of us, and the wind is blowing 40 or 50 miles an hour. The tournament director says, we can't, we can't do it. We're going to cancel day one. And so we're sitting, we're all sitting around going, well, all right. I mean, the wind, the trees, it's crazy. I mean, you're, you're, nobody in the right mind is going to go out there and go fishing today. So everybody kind of sat around, we pow wow, we talked, told fish stories. This is day one of a pro-am. We're all, everybody's boats are still hooked up on the trailer. The, the Delta. Uh, out on the California Delta. This is on the California Delta in April of whatever, 02, 03, something like that. 10-foot wave. Yeah. It is, it is unbelievable. It is on. Cancel the first day. Winner take all tomorrow. Out here on the California Delta, the winds are supposed to be 10, 15 miles an hour. Okay, fine. Everybody's sitting there going, well, what are we going to do the rest of the day? Well, one of the guys gets a bright idea. He says, let's go to Lake Amador, Northern California. Not a very big lake. Very similar to some of the lakes you guys have down here. Small. 120, 200 acre lake. Small. About 15, 20 guys said, yeah, let's go. If the wind's not that bad over at Lake Amador. So 20 bass boats drove over the hill, drove through the, Bill, Bill says, he came up to me and goes, where's this Amador, is it any good? They I, left me. <laughs> they <laughs> they I, like, we don't want him to show up, so they left me. So I, had <laughs> so I told Bill, I said, Bill, just go get in line, follow that last boat, and just follow him all the way to Amador. He goes, well, I've never been there before. I know you've never been there before. Don't worry about it. You'll do just fine. Knowing you, you'll figure it out in about 10 minutes. Come to find out after I heard the story later, he figured it out in about 7 minutes. This is what happened on that day. This is a short little quick synopsis. I could give a 9-hour seminar on this day that he pulled up. Bunch of these guys, big shot dudes, right? Northern California. Oh man, oh we got Cinatel, big bass guru from Southern California. We got him up here on one of our ponds. We're gonna smoke him big time. This is gonna be awesome. Oh Billy Boy, he calls me up on the cell phone. He goes, man, this place isn't very big. He goes, I think I got this. I said, I know you got this. Keep me informed. Okay, cool. So I get my stuff ready for tomorrow. Bill's up there. He takes a quick hot lap around the lake. Kind of look at that's a shallow point. This is a steeper one right here. The sun's coming up over here. I got some shadows over here. Oh, cool. And I'm thinking about some of the stuff that he was teaching me and all that. Long story short, at the end of the day, the boys, I, I know, the boys, they pull the boats out. Everybody's got their fish. But one guy's got a five pounder. This guy's got a three and a half. He's got nothing. He's got nothing. He's got nothing. He's got nothing. He's got a four pounder. Nobody had more than one fish in their life. Well, these are guys that have been to this lake multiple times. He's never been there. His best five that day, over 35 pounds. Dude showed up and took all their money. All those guys left with, I mean, with the tail between the legs over the hill. It was awesome. 
Anyway, this guy right here, the stuff that he does, and then he told me how it went down, and he was telling me about how the sun came over the hill, and I noticed this, and I took a hot lap, and the wind was coming this way, and then it changed why it changed my tank. Anyway, really? <laughs> it was this tank is exciting. It was, it was so awesome. It was so awesome listening to the story and how that whole thing went down. And I was so impressed, and I, I got to do this to a lot of the guys that I know. I told you. You know, that was that was kind of cool. That was my, that was, and that's what it was, because a couple of them I'm not real crazy about. So I got, I got to kick their butt through you, so it was pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. First time I said that. <laughs> anyway, Bill's got, Bill's got some great, I know we only have X amount of minutes here, and I, I've taken up half of it already. I, I apologize for that. I thought I was going to speak. But, um, I'll tell you what, the, the max, did you mention maximum fishing line? We got maximum out there, you guys yeah. know about that, we go to, um, on the website, like I said, on my YouTube channel, BBD TV, I just hit on the double all right, which is a great two, four, short, and long full, and not, which is, I've never had a problem with that, and I will tie it faster than, I'll tie it faster than anybody out here in the thing with that. So you guys, when you have confidence in something else, so people will think that I'm you guys have to practice. But when you do, you find it's it, it, it was when you get it down, it gets it's phenomenal. Also, from the monofilament and fluorocarbon and gray, there's three basic knots that I use all the time. So it's just something. If you're good at knots, that video is not for you. But if you need to kind of understand it and kind of see what I'm doing, I would check it out and have a couple on that part. But it comes down to here is. This is a different seminar. I'm not going to sell you products. I'm going to teach you. And what I want you guys to do is, if you have questions, I'll try to answer them as quickly as I can. But my objective today is to turn the light bulb on. You guys hear a ton of sem seminars. They're all trying to say, hey, you need to use this paint and everything else. I'll tell you one thing. There are 10,000 paints out there in this show. There's only a handful of techniques. The techniques are the key. The understanding the water, the bait fish, and how fish position, how they eat. That's the goal. Now the lures I use, they are my confidence base. They're bulletproof. I catch a ton of fish. If you don't want to use my lures, that's okay. Use your own, but understand the technique and you'll catch a bigger fish day in and day out. I don't care if you're a tournament fisherman, a weekend angler, out there with your kids. There's, there's things that you got to have to start paying attention to, and that's what this show's about. So we'll, we'll kind of open up, and if, if you have questions too, Bobby, or anybody out there, this is your time. I, I will say one more thing. You know, Bill's, you know, his rise to fame, and everybody knows who he is because of all the big swim baits that he throws, up to 16 ounces, you know, 16 inches, and, and big, multiple team fish in the same day, and all that kind of stuff. But the thing is, the guy's a finesse expert, too. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, it, he may be better at finesse than he is throwing big bags. I don't know, it's, it's one, two, two, one, whatever, however you want to put it. So those of you that have, one of the questions that you might want to ask him is, when do I put the big bags down and pick up the smaller stuff, right? I mean, that's a loaded question. He'd probably sit up here for two weeks and answer that question. So we'll start. Does anybody have a question for Bill? I will come over and I'll let you talk into the microphone. And he will answer the question for you. Don't be afraid, guys. I'm telling you, this is like school. There are no wrong answers. I'm going to tweak your melon if you ask the right What question. type of line? Pre-spawn, post-spawn, summertime, nighttime. You guys, you guys want to hear, hear the good one. You guys want to hear some fishing stuff? You want to hear some, some out-of-the-box thinking? Out-of-the-box thinking. First of all, when I break down lakes, I take the water out. There's terminology out there that people have mistakenly said for years. There's structure and there's cover. Anything, when you take the water out and you look at mount terrain, bluff walls, flats, creek channel, that's a structure. Anything that you put on top of it is considered cover. Brush plows, an old trash can, rocks, a, a tree limb, an old car, that's cover. It's something that sits on top of the structure. Understanding terminology is your first, first thing that you have to understand. Once you do that and you put the water back in the lake, the lake is broke down into three major parts, top, middle, bottom, and it doesn't matter the depth. How deep is this pond behind us? Say six foot, right? There's three levels to that. Two, four, six, top, middle, bottom. Any technique, when you guys go out there and go, how did that guy pick up that bait and catch that fish? Bobby and I fished together at the Delta. He said, I'm gonna take you to some of the baddest ass spots in the lake. We went out to Frank's track. 
He goes, we're going to fish this at low pool. The water's going to sink. The fish are going to suck into these little teeny holes. Here it is. And we're going to throw baits down at the bottom of it. Well, how deep is it right now, Bobby? Three foot. Top, middle, bottom. He hits it with the buzz bait. That's top. He does a spinner bait through the middle, a foot down, and we throw a jig on the bottom, top, middle, bottom. We end up catching jig fish that day. Two hours later, he throws a buzz bait. The fish change so quick, next thing you know, they're fishing the top of the water. He's throwing, I shouldn't tell, one gamble black buzz baits and whacking 10 pounders. Understanding the top, middle, bottom, and how this fish position around the cover and structure is the key. A lot of you guys out there just go down the bank. You know, I see pros do it all the time. They sit out here with their boat and they throw it to the shoreline. And, they show them. and they'll see a tree and they'll throw it to the tree, but they don't understand what to see in the lake the water. And understanding what's under the water and how the fish are positioned in those areas, that's some of the biggest keys, okay? Funnels. Does anybody know what a funnel is? I'm going to kind of show you some crazy stuff. This is the stuff that puts fish in the boat. Have you ever heard of the story of like guys when hey, I hunt for big fish? You guys that hunt for fish? We don't hunt for fish. We don't take a gun and go, there's a fish over there, we go bang. Or shoot them with a bow and arrow scout the night. We want that fish to do one thing, and what is that? Eat us. That lure is a projection of what we're doing. We're the prey. You're trying to make that lure put it in a position so that bass goes, that's a crawdad, that's a jig, that's a swim bait, that's a fly, it doesn't matter. I want to eat that, but how does that bait move? And where does that bait usually go? And where it goes in that one spot, that's my dinner table, that's my funnel. Okay? Anybody box? Anybody know about boxing? There's one crazy spot in boxing that you do not want to get into. The corners. Bobby's in the corner, I'm sitting here, and I'm going to just He's going to do everything, doing all these directional changes, trying to get out of the corner. And I'm going to sit there and I'm going to pummel him into that pump. The fish do exactly the same thing. If you can look down a shoreline and it looks a bluff wall, and there's a little outcropping or a slough bump, and it creates a V, that's the pump. Now you have to be smart enough to position your boat, or your feet, or your float tube, or up on a bluff wall, or a ladder, however you fish, you have to position yourself to throw the bait in deeper water and bring it up to that funnel because that's where the fish are going to pin that thing and eat it. If you throw right at the funnel, you're out there 20 foot, and you pull it six inches and it's out in open water, you're not going to catch as many fish. If you parallel that wall and you fish your bait in six inches of water and you bring it up to that three foot or three inch little lip right there, I'll catch more fish out of that little teeny bee that most people catch on a bluff wall their entire life. And that's how fish think, that's how they position, and that's how they feed. I fit on, I'll go. I fish uphill almost 100% of the time. And here's the thing. I grow fishing off the shore, and I, I use my feet and I walk, and what I learned is what happens is when you go uphill, Bit, when I talk about funnels, what I'm doing is I'm looking at a place that things shrink. You're giving a bass an opportunity to corral their, their forage. Okay? When you fish uphill, you drop to deep water, you're fishing a jig. What happens is the water, the top surface is there, the bottom's coming up, and as it comes up, it creates that beat. That's the funnel. Every little rock you hit coming uphill, that's where bass goes and pushes the prod it up to it. You pop the jig. The jig cork flips up the air. It creates an illusion of realism. That jig is a product going, don't eat me. And the bass pumps or something. Fish in uphill, okay? You can do that uphill on structure. You can fish uphill on cover. How do you fish uphill on cover? You find a grass flat. You throw out in deeper water. You bring it up into the grass fat flat. The fish will run those edges on the grass flat. On a circle and a hole in the grass flat, any of the circumferences around it, the edge, if you throw in the center of that grass flat and work your bait up to that edge of that grass, that's a, it's, a, it's a funnel. The fish will eat against it. The surface of the water, where it creates water to air, it's a hard spot. You could throw a top water bait along a shadow edge. That shadow edge is as hard as the shoreline. 
you can fit, the fish will come in open water up to that shadow edge, and I don't care if it's four foot of water or 40 foot or 400 foot, and the fish will eat against that shadow edge, uphill approach, just as easy as they'll hit against a rock wall.